Hello, and welcome to Starting a Business Simplified, Navigating the Shift, a podcast for those of you looking to transition from a medical career to starting an online business. I will be sharing how to get started, success stories, and more. If you are looking to make the move from medicine to online, but don't know where to start or have a business, but are looking for business tips and encouragement on your journey, this is the podcast for you. I'm Susie Rains, your host, and I look forward to helping you simplify starting a business. Welcome back to Starting a Business Simplified. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about taking care of your business documents. I know that doesn't sound very fun, and I don't enjoy it either, (laughs) just to be straight up. But it is a very, very important part of managing your business. So we're going to talk documents today. And for those of you listening, if you're rolling your eyes and you're thinking, this is not a fun topic, I will do the best that I can to simplify it for you so that you have steps that you can take right now or once you finish listening that will make it easier and more fun. So first of all, You have to have a location to store your electronic documents. So depending on what business you have, there may be also some rules and regulations around how long you need to keep your documents. And if you have client documents, so if you work for people and you handle their documents, there are going to be other rules and regulations around that as well. It's going to vary depending on your business. So what I recommend is researching the rules that you have to follow depending on the types of documents that you have. And that's important to do for financial documents, legal documents, and health documents. A lot of different rules around those things. So once you know how long you need to keep your documents for, there's a few things you can do. I'm going to speak to electronic first because it's easier to set up an electronic system to save your documents. When it comes to paper, you got to have a physical location. And depending on the rules around it, you may have to have double locks on your filing cabinets and doors to get to the files, that type of thing. So let's talk electronic documents. I'm going to simplify this for you. For those of you who have a Google Drive, if you have other systems, so if you have Microsoft, you might have another type of a drive. That's okay too. For Mac users, you might have a different type of a drive. So I'm going to use Google Drive as my example. And whatever storage drive you have is where you can put these documents. And these can be put on, I'm going to tell you, if you put them on your computer, you're going to do a backup. So if it's online to the cloud, that goes to the cloud. And then the cloud, it has its own backup. I like to back up my stuff even on the cloud. So I'm going to give you the step-by-step what you can do in order to ensure that you don't lose any of your documents and you're able to access them at any time. So step one, your file location. Where are you going to save your documents to? If you're going to do it on your computer, have a backup. But you're going to have a folder that is your business name. You're going to start with that folder. If you're going to do it in the cloud for whatever service you have, you're going to create a folder with your business name. The next step is to go into that folder and you're going to create a folder for each section of your business. So you're going to have your business concept, which will be all of your business ideas, your mission and vision, everything that has to do with the foundation of your business. The next file you're going to do is marketing. You can label it sales and marketing if you want, if you want to put those two together. If you'd like to do them separately, you can do as many folders as you want. They're your folders. I'm just giving you a step-by-step for you to follow now, and then you can expand on it later. So you'll have a marketing folder, sales and marketing, or marketing, and then a separate sales folder, finance, or you can call it accounting. You label them whatever makes sense to you, but this is your financial information goes in this folder and accounting. And then you're going to have an operations folder. 
or if you want to call it procedures or protocols, whatever you decide to call it, it's where you're going to keep everything that has to do with how the processes of your business run. And then you're going to have a, you can do a human resources folder, or you can call it team management folder. You can call it hiring help folder, (laughs) whatever you want to call it. That's going to be your folder for when you have contractors or hiring staff or partnering with people, whatever you want to put in that folder that is help people that are coming to help you. So you're using help, outside help, or hiring internally. If you're hiring internally, that would be a human resources folder. And then you can make as many folders as you want, but those are the top folders that you're going to want to use to get started. Now, everything else that goes inside of each of those folders is completely up to you. So for example, in my accounting, I call it accounting folder. That's where all my financial information is. Under my accounting folder, I have another folder that says taxes. And within that folder, I make folders that are by year. So I can always find my tax documents for my business by clicking on accounting, taxes, and then the year that I'm looking for. Another folder that I put under accounting is my receipts. So I put accounting and then in that folder, I have receipts as a folder. And then within that folder, I have the year. So the year the receipts are in. And then each folder that's in that year is based on who the receipt is for or from. So the vendor that I used. So for example, If I have a, I use Zoom. So if I have a receipt for Zoom, then it's going to go in my accounting receipts 2023 Zoom. (laughs) And I know this is my process. So feel free to adjust it, change it, do it exactly the same way, whatever works for you. The point is, all of these folders roll up to my business folder. So When I get ready to back up, and I do a backup of my folders once a month, so it's on my calendar, and I what I do is I use Google Drive, so I have a Google Drive in the cloud that has my business name on it. I have an external drive that is, I think it's like two terabytes, it's huge, plugs into my computer, USB, and I just drag that business name folder to my external drive let it copy, and then I put the date. So I label that file the date of the backup. So it would be business simplified and then the date that I actually exported it. And I keep those files for at least for five years. And really, it's up to you how, again, the rules that you have to follow and how you want to do that. Now, for client information, with my client information, I work with my clients in a coaching platform. So all of their information is in that platform. What I do with my client files is I actually export their information that I'm saving in that client platform. And I make a folder in my business folder that says clients. And then under that, I put the name of the client. And I keep their information separately so that I can reference it. So if I change coaching platforms later, I still have my previous client information. Whenever you have a platform that you're using that you're that you're housing information on, like my coaching platform, you want to save the pertinent information. You want to save what you need to from there and back it up so that if you switch platforms later, you have your previous information. If you ever get confused about this, all this stuff that I'm talking about, schedule a call with me. I would love to talk to you and just brainstorm with you how to set this up because it's once you get it set up, then it's a smooth process. You always know where to put your documents. You always know where to find your documents when you need them. And you're protecting your business by backing everything up every month. And you can back up as often as you want. If you want to do it weekly, you can do it weekly. It's totally up to you. Quarterly, I would not recommend waiting longer than quarterly because you want to make sure you're capturing all the information. So for example, all my contacts. I have a CRM and 
It's a client relationship management tool. And it collects all of my the people that I know, their email addresses and how I communicate with them and all of that. I have a reminder that's on my calendar every week. I export my contacts to a spreadsheet and I save it. I have a backup folder that is under my business folder. So my business folder, and then I have one that's called backup. In the backup folder, I have one called contacts so that I can find all my contacts and all my previous contacts. Should something happen and that platform goes down or I decide to change, I don't want to use a platform anymore. I want to move over to something else. I have a list of all my contacts and I have the information from way before. It's totally up to you how long you keep that information. You just want to be thinking. The thing I want to impress most in this episode is thinking about how you're going to access the information that you have when you need it in the future. There are so many different platforms and online systems and things that you can sign up for, and you're going to change and grow and shift. And as you get bigger as a business, you're going to try different things. You're going to want to move to something that might be better for you, better suited for your business. But you have to take, you want to take all that information that you've collected over the years with you. So having a backup of everything that you're doing is so, so incredibly important. I want to take a minute and just touch on websites. When it comes to websites, the best thing you can do is on your website where you have written content, make sure you have a copy of it. You never know when something is going to break or go down. And if your website gets gets hacked or something happens or it just goes down and you can't access it, you lose all of that content. So when your website is up and you know everything on there is the way you want it to be, and again, websites are going to change, content's going to change, make sure that you're copying that written content. And again, I have a folder in my business name folder that says website. In that website folder, I have content. I have a folder content and I I label it by the date. So I know, okay, this content is from 2022 or whatever. And I know how old it is. But that's a great way for you to capture that information that's on your website. Should your website go down, something happens out of your control, you have a place that you can go back to for content. And maybe it changed from the time you backed it up, or maybe you want to change it, or it's the same. You now have that content and you can just create a new website and it's quicker and easier and you have it already set. So those are all of the key things that I wanted to cover just to make sure that you're thinking about your documents, your your content, all this beautiful stuff that you're doing and you're building and you're creating in your business. You want to make sure that you have ownership of that offline away from the internet so that if anything happens you have access to it you own that that is your intellectual property as a business owner nobody else is allowed to have it but you unless you give them permission so i just wanted to make that clear in the fact that it's your information and if you follow a good path of how to handle it You'll always have it in the future if something is something happens. Not to mention, all that content that you're saving, that's a great place to go for inspiration, to come up with ideas, maybe to, to repurpose. All that stuff is great for you to have in the future. One more thing before we go. Podcasters, for those of you listening that have a podcast, what I do with my podcasts, I download them from my podcast platform and save them to my drive. So under my business name folder, I have one called podcasts. And then I have it by year and by month. And I have all my podcasts that I've recorded. So not only do I have the actual original recording that I save, but I have the finished podcast, the one that's edited and all pretty and stuff that you guys hear. I have that one saved as well. So I could always grab that at any time. It's backed up. It's on my external drive and I'm not losing anything. So if something shifts, if, you know, 
for some reason, the podcast platform I'm using goes down or they just stop working. They just decide they don't want to do it anymore. I have all of that information and I can go to another platform and re-upload it if I want to without having to start from scratch. So hopefully this information was helpful for you. And I hope I explained it in a good, simple way. Let me know what you think. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. You can find me on my website. My email is in this podcast, so you can find that too. All the links are in the show notes. And as always, keep it simple. Thanks for listening to this episode of Starting a Business Simplified, Navigating the Shift. If you enjoyed this episode, then hit the subscribe or follow button on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. This podcast is for you, so be sure to reach out and let me know what you thought about this episode. If you're not sure how to get started with your business, download a copy of the Starting a Business Simplified Guide. Click on the link in the show notes for your copy. 